Hi, I am Angel Ribo with Mindalia TV, and we are here today with Dr. Angel Luis Fernandez. Hi, uh, Dr. Angel, how are you? Very well, and it's a pleasure indeed to be here with you today. Thank you. Sharing this special moment. Thank you, absolutely. I, I have to say that I was immediately thrilled when I knew that I was going to have a guest called the same as me, Angel, Angel in Spanish. And we are obviously today at the city of angels, which is uh, Los Angeles. So <laughs> thank you very much for he being here today. And the first question I would like to ask you is, what's that particular thing that keeps you most passionate? That's a, a, a pretty, I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult for me to, to answer uh, uh, that question. Uh, specifically, I don't have a field in which I uh, feel especially motivated. Mm -hmm because uh, I try to touch different areas in, in, uh, in different worlds, you know. Uh, I'm here, for example, as a medical doctor. I'm a psychiatrist and, uh, uh, and a psychologist at the same time. Uh, I'm here in, in this respect in, uh, as, a, as a professional uh, healer, let's put it this way, since I'm an allopathic person. But um, I'm interested in music very much. Uh, I consider myself to be a prolific writer. Um, my books are published within the United States. And um, uh, almost one month ago, I published my book number 43. So um, it's difficult for me to, uh, to specify when uh, you know, determined field in which I feel really well because I actually uh, move around in, in different spectres and, and, and different, you know, uh, areas. So uh, I couldn't tell you one specifically. Okay. Yeah. Is it something that excites you more than the others? Not really. I, I, I feel myself very committed to everything I do and uh, whatever I am at, at every moment. And in this way, um, well, I'm simply a lecturer, a keynote address person who's been invited as a guest speaker in this place. And uh, so I, uh, at this very moment, I feel confident, comfortable with what I'm doing, you know. But there are many other topics in which I'm very interested, uh, like writing or making music. And, you know, that's... Uh, what I could say in this respect. Excellent, excellent, perfect. So what, what does spirituality mean to you? Spirituality, mean, spirituality means everything to me. Um, since I left uh, a little bit behind my uh, previous life, I entered the spiritual world and um, I've been conducting seminars all over the world, uh, from Japan and China to South America, and, and I started writing books on, on these topics. I would say that um, uh, uh, spiritual life is uh, like my direction in, in this very moment and that I feel happy when I have the chance to share with people about my thoughts and beliefs and what I live in, in my daily life. You know? So I would say that uh, if there is a feeling which I'm most interested at this moment is spirituality as a matter of fact. Good. Um, how, what are those beliefs that you typically like to share with the people around you? Well, I don't really uh, talk about beliefs, but uh, about feelings, you know. And I'm uh, 180 degrees south of the rest of the people on these topics, you know. I, I talk about my own experiences and about feelings, but n never about beliefs. Uh, even though I respect uh, whatever other people would like to, to do, to share or practice, whatever, but I don't belong to any of those beliefs. I consider myself to be a member of the triple A, mm -hmm. agnostic and apostate, mm -hmm. and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a television show all over America since uh, 11 years ago, and every one of my programs tries to reflect this uh, uh, concept, you know, which is uh, available to everyone 
and which doesn't mean or imply uh, the belonging to to any uh, any kind of religion, sect, or belief, or whatever. You know. Inside the spirituality, is there a subject that you are um, that you have, or in, in your television show that you have that you have uh, been more or have been showing more to the rest of your audience? I would say uh, spiritual psychology. Spiritual psychology. Spiritual psychology. Mm -hmm. Is that a, how do you help people with the spiritual psychology? Helping them to react. Uh, before those uh, life manifestations that they cannot explain and that uh, could be easily uh, be, it become more easily affordable from a spiritual point of view. Uh, this means that uh, I try to help and recognize who they are, uh, help them to regain their uh, authentic, their authentic self lost. Uh, in the way since they were little, and uh, helping them to uh, to look to the infinity and the eternity with uh, another glance, with another view. Mm, that's what I try to do with them. Could you give me an example? For example, I um, I talk about the world of energies and uh, the world of energies, explaining how the body is made uh, with the different spheres. Uh, considering uh, the, uh, the, the, the the first exp the first one of them as the uh, uh, more sensitive uh, sphere of action, and secondly uh, about the uh, unconscious sphere of the uh, uh, as the most important one in terms of self healing, and then the subconscious. Um, trying to explain them how the subconscious experience works as a hard drive, you know, containing all of the information and everything surrounding them and the others around at the same time. And uh, while, while they are able to, to understand and to assume these possibilities, uh, life is easier, becomes easier for them. Because, I mean, they go a little bit farther than uh, the conscious level and assume how the unconscious sphere becomes the guarantee of their behavior and their movements through life and understand that the other one, the subconscious uh, sphere, uh, will become the place uh, where they uh, get all of the information um, uh, from everywhere, from any time, uh, all together that could be easily uploaded to the conscious level. So that helps us a lot. And I am uh, starting to introduce the, a new way of uh, self-healing based in the, um, let's say, like, uh, the, uh, like a, a special therapy that I would call conceptual therapy. Uh, there are lots of people everywhere who do not have sufficiently clear, you know, certain movements, certain, certain aspects of their lives, and with the conceptual therapy, they understand to to get another insight, a different vision of reality, and move forward easily. You know, so this is basically what I'm doing. Is, right is now. the human being able to seal, excuse me, to heal themselves? Well, they are doing, but uh, what happens is that they have forgotten how to do it. When I talk about, for example, the uh, uh, self-healing process uh, using the uh, unconscious sphere, I am referring, I'm trying to make him uh, recall mm, the way, for example, this body works. I mean, you have, um, for example, um, an emotional dysfunction and your eyes start making tears automatically without your command. I mean, you, you don't need to tell your eyes, I need you to, to produce tears right now to help me relieve and heal this uh, emotional problem. You know? uh, and things like that. I mean, it's, it's only like a remembrance, something that they should be able to know or recall that they had this possibility. In general, it's curious because this disappears after five years of all. 
I have participated in, in many different research programs here in the United States and somewhere else in other countries. And uh, what, um, uh, what we discovered at a time is the way an infant, a uh, small child, is uh, educated since uh, his very beginning to life. You know? For example, they try to impose the young child um, about the good and the bad, you know? And uh, good and bad are not um, absolute concepts, but are relative, because whatever may be good for you, perhaps is too bad for me, and vice versa, you know? And things like that, you know? For example, aesthetic canons, I mean, what might be extremely beautiful for you, it could be appalling to me, very ugly, you know? And things like that, you know? Uh, when you start uh, the education of your own children, for example, trying to make out of them a copy of yourself, or the father or the mother, a photocopy or a clone of themselves, that's wrong. If you try to, to base uh, their education in these kind of aspects, the sense of uh, ridiculous, you know, the, the good and the bad, and the, uh, the, the sense of shame, etc., you're not doing well with them. And they start losing their natural uh, possibilities before life uh, with which uh, every one of us are born. How do we you know, forget about our own ability to heal ourselves? Well, because um, we are not ourselves anymore. I mean, we, we are simply uh, puppets from the, the, the parents, from the system, the school, teachers, and so on. I mean, you don't really have the chance to become yourself. You lose your sense of identity when you are exposed, you know, to all of these vectors, all of these forces that are affecting you all the time. And when you lose these, you, you lose everything. You can see, for example, a small child when the other is in distress and has a problem. Imagine somebody who's having a headache and comes the, the little friend and says, you have a headache, or oh, one moment, I can heal you. And he puts, you know, his hand on your head and, and automatically you're healed, you know. So it is at that very moment when you lose all of these capacities that are farther along are called um, uh, paranormal capacities. You know? Right with which every one of us is born. Excellent. Um, I would like to finish our conversation today before asking you if you could kindly, uh, you know, just give a piece of advice to our audience. Um, so please, yeah, that, yes. that, that will be the camera, so. Uh, well, I'm not very much um, in the mood of giving advice because um, uh, to other people, uh, because I, I very much respect the, the need of everyone uh, to, um, uh, you know, to make mistakes uh, or to fail in something. So what I'm going is um, probably to, to give uh, an overall thought that might be Excellent. used to anyone who might be interested in my words. And I would say, Try to recover your own identity, try to become yourself again, uh, and don't let the others affect you in your behavior or in your life or in your experiences. Try to experience yourself and, and try to be genuine, not a copy of anybody. Yourself. Excellent. Be yourself. Excellent. So, Dr. Angel Luis Fernandez, thank you very much for thank you being for here with inviting us. me, and all the best to Mind Daily Television in English, which is uh, a fantastic approach, and I wish you well and all the best endeavors. Thank now you. And forever. Thank you very much. Again, this is uh, Angel Ribo uh, with Mind Daily TV, and thank you very much for being here today.